Hello, friends. Welcome to Learn with Lakshman. I think we have spoken about a few things yesterday, and today we'll talk about a motivation in research. What we have not spoken about yet is motivation in research. Anyways, let us try to understand what motivates us to take on the research or to carry out the research. There are certain motivations of research. I have enlisted the motivations of research. The first motivation of research is a desire to get a research degree along with its consequential benefits. Remember, we all desire to get a research degree. We have admitted in this research center, we have taken admission in Swami Ramananda Tirth Marathwada University because we want to have the degree of PhD. Not only is that, we also want to have the consequential benefits of the PhD degree. What are the consequential benefits of the PhD degree? Some of the consequential benefits of the PhD degree are, you are going to get a job earlier, you were given some incentives, right? And then, you are you're going to be called a doctor. This is going to be an additional additional qualification to your bio data and these many things. So these are the consequential benefits of the degree. The first thing is that you have, or we all have, a desire to get a research degree. Okay, and this is a research degree along with its consequential benefits. This is the first thing. We are talking about what motivates us to carry out research. Second, desire to face the challenge in solving the unsolved problems. This is a higher level objective or higher level motivation. This, also, this is, but this is a positive kind of motivation when we desire to face challenges in solving the unsolved problems in the society, in the science, in social sciences, or in Every walk of life, we have certain problems and certain challenges those have not been solved. We feel that we have to face those problems and solve those problems. And therefore, we take on the research. That means we have concern over the practical problems. And this concern, Concern actually initiates a kind of research, first in our mind and then on the paper. Next, motivation. What is the next motivation for taking uh, the research? Desire to get intellectual joy of doing creative work. Now, research is a creative work. Why is it a creative work? Because you do it. You create something new. You bring out something new. You discover something new and therefore we always have a desire of creating or doing something new. That is again one more motivation of the research. Then another is desire to be useful to the society. Now when we carry out the research it means that we'll definitely be going to be useful to the society and we always have a desire in our mind, in our heart to be useful to the society. Therefore, this is also a kind of motivation for us to take on the research. Next is urge to get respectability. I mean, everybody of us want to be a respectable person in the society. And when we become a respectable person in the society, when they call you doctor, right? Doctor in the sense, doctor means that you have completed your PhD or you've taken on some research, but that is not the only thing. Remember, when you uh, find out something new, when you do a research and come up with some certain concrete conclusions, you get respect in the society. And all of us human beings want to be respectable in the society. So this desire also motivates us to take on the research. And at last, but not least, some other motivations are directives of government. For instance, government tells us that if you complete your PhD, you will get a job. That is the directive of government. Government tells us that if you complete the PhD, you will become associate professor. Otherwise, you won't be able to go to the position of associate professor. That is, these are some of the directives of the government. Government also tells us that you have to complete the PhD and give certain incentives. That is there. Okay. Then employment conditions. We have employment condition that if you are a PhD, you will be appointed. That is one employment condition. And there are other things like 
curiosity about new things because through research we try to learn new things and this curiosity about new things also serves as a motivation for us to take on the research it i'll read out the motivations once again desire to get a research degree along with its consequential benefits desire to face the challenges in solving the unsolved problems desire to get intellectual joy of doing creative work desire to be useful to the society urge to get respectability directives of government employment conditions and curiosity about new things these are some of the motivations of research now we'll talk about objectives of the research remember the purpose of research is to discover answers to the questions through the application of scientific procedures try to understand this why do we take on the research we take on the research in order to discover answers to the questions and how do we take answers to these questions through the application of scientific processes we apply certain processes certain scientific processes and by applying those scientific processes we try to find out answers to the questions that is the purpose of research is to discover answers to the questions through the application of scientific processes the main uh, aim of the research is to find out undiscovered truth what does research do chiefly research try to find out the undiscovered truth the truth has that has not been discovered yet we try to discover that truth through the research though remember though each research and each research study has its own specific purposes we cannot say that these are the only purposes or objectives of the research study they are definitely different research objectives differ from person to person and area to area and topic to topic and we know that there are several topics in the study there are several disciplines but still we can bring out certain common purposes certain common objectives of research which we'll talk about okay try to understand we're going to discuss four objectives of research which is which are common to all which are common to all researchers say for instance the first objective is to gain familiarity with phenomenon or to achieve new insights in it what is the first objective to gain familiarity to become familiar with a phenomenon any phenomenon i mean we must be talking about any kind of research anything we just try to become familiar with with that phenomena with that topic or with that event or anything that is there and we try to achieve new insights into it we try to achieve new insights into it no matter what the discipline is no matter what the area is no matter what the specific area is if if it is a research concerning humanities it's the same thing if it is a research concerning social sciences it is the same thing and even if it is a research concerning basic sciences fundamental sciences it is the same thing we tend try to gain familiar with the phenomenon or we try to achieve new sights into the topic that we are studying okay and this kind of research in which we try to gain again familiarity with the phenomenon and we try to achieve new insights into into it is generally called exploratory or formulative research study remember this is something that we call exploratory rhetoric or formulative why do you call why do we call it exploratory because we tend to explore things right we tend to explore the things in it or we tend to formulate something throughout through it that's why it is called exploratory or formulative research study but what is the objective basically here to gain familiarity with a phenomenon or to achieve new insights into that phenomenon what we are going to undertake for our study that is what we have to remember the second objective of the research is to portray accurately the characteristics of a particular individual situation or a group now remember this 
to portray accurately. What a researcher tries to do? A researcher tries to write something, understand, portray things. Okay. Now, what do we portray actually? What do a researcher portray? He portrays a particular individual, a particular situation, a particular group, a particular phenomenon, or anything. But how is it portrayed? It is portrayed accurately. Accuracy is important because research needs to be accurate and it needs to be objective. To portray accurately the characteristics of a particular individual, situation, or a group. This type of research study, remember, is called descriptive research because what do we do in it? We try to describe the things. For instance, we are taking research on some historical figure. So what do we try to do? We try to understand the facts in it. We try to get deep insights into the fact, into the character of the person, and then we try to portray his characters. We try to describe things, and therefore it is called descriptive research. Therefore, we call it the descriptive research. But the objective is to portray accurately the characteristics of a particular individual situation or a group. That is what we have to remember. We have spoken about two objectives. Let's talk about the third objective of the research. Third objective is to determine the frequency with which something occurs. Remember, the frequency with which something occurs. For how many times a particular thing happens, takes place, that is called frequency. Uh, to determine the frequency with which something occurs or with which it is associated with something else or with which it is associated with something else. It's basically a kind of uh, scientific, in science you can say scientific research also, but this type of study is generally known as diagnostic research. Diagnostic research study because our intention in taking, uh, taking up these kind of study is to diagnose the problem, have the diagnosis of the things. Diagnosis is to have an understanding of the problem. That is called diagnosis. And the last, hypo uh, sorry, last objective of this research is to test a hypothesis of casual relationship between variables. Because we know that when we have a research plan, we also have a hypothesis with us, right? And the, the objective of the research is to test the hypothesis of a casual relationship between variables. Because in the research, we have variables. This, 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 these are our variables. And we have to test hypothesis of the relationship, casual relationship between the variables. And this kind of research or this kind of study is generally termed as hypothesis testing research study. This kind of study is stated as hypothesis testing research study. These can also be considered as the types of research. Say for instance, exploratory research, descriptive research, diagnostic research and hypothesis testing research. These four also can be termed as the types of research, but we are going to talk about types of research in detail later on. So let us not consider these to be the types, but you can have this in your mind that exploratory research, descriptive research, diagnostic research, and hypothesis testing research is also a kind of research. Four basic objectives of research are to gain familiar, familiarity with a phenomenon or achieve new insights into the phenomenon. Second is to portray accurately the characteristics of a particular individual situation or a group. Third is to determine the frequency with which something occurs or with which it is associated with something else. And fourth is to test the hypothesis of casual relationship between variables. These were the four objectives we have seen. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe and share.